Uh, did you know that it takes a, a score of 130 or higher on a standardized test? In other words, you have to be better than 98% of all the other people out there in the standardized test in order to be considered a genius by Mensa. Interestingly enough, psychologist Frank Lawless of Mensa has said that someone like Albert Einstein, who's a genius pretty much in anyone's book, uh, would not have done well on these types of standardized tests, which judge IQ, because the one thing that it doesn't, doesn't judge, what it doesn't test, is out-of-the-box thinking and creativity. Out-of-the-box thinking is kind of hard to judge, kind of hard to test for. Out-of-the-box thinkers, in fact, uh, will oftentimes ask so many more additional questions to any questions that are posed to them on these types of standardized quests and come up with, on these te standardized tests and come up with so many additional answers to these questions that they tend to get bogged down, get confused, and don't do very well. In fact, uh, Keith Simonton, a distinguished psychology professor at the University of California, Davis, has said that intelligence and genius is really best measured by a mixture of creativity, imagination, and contribution to society. So overall, this really makes it very hard to pinpoint exactly what genius is. I like this quote from uh, the 19th century German philosopher, Arthur Schopenhauer, who said that talent hits a target no one else can hit. Genius hits a target no one else can see. Consider this from Einstein. Einstein said that the true measure of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. Stephen Hawking had this to say, intelligence is the, is, the, is the measure and the ability to be able to adapt to change. So other than this standardized test by Mensa and all these different opinions on what genius is, there's really no way to measure it. Okay, so what's my point? My point is this, I believe that each and every one of us, anyone has their own version, their own personal version of genius, their unique gifts that are waiting to be unleashed inside of them. And to unleash these gifts and this genius, I firmly believe that you have to play to your strengths, your passion, you have to explore your creativity, but have the intention also of serving something bigger than yourself for the betterment of society. And I will tell you that along the way, as you're trying to unleash this unique gift that you have in this form of genius, you will hit dark times. You will hit trials and adversity. As they say, anything worth doing is not easy, right? So what you're going to need is a mindset that I call ferocious optimism. And we'll get into that in a little while here. And I'd like to quote also the famous scientist Marie Curie, who had said that we must have perseverance and optimism and self-confidence above all else. We must believe that we are gifted for something, gifted for something, and that this thing must be attained. So the question is, how do we figure out what our own personal genius is, our own unique gifts are to share with the world? How do we do this? Well, I believe it begins with what your passions are. I firmly believe this. You have to explore and see what your passions are. What are the things that really interest you? What are the things that you get excited about that you naturally gravitate towards? What are your natural strengths? What are your strengths that you just tend to be better at naturally? Where does your curiosity lie? What do you want to learn more about? What are your interests in? All of these things, I believe, are truly the clues that will lead you to these gifts you have inside of you that you, when you unleash them, will not only make yourself better, but make the world better. And you have to ask yourself this as well, too, as you're exploring this and wondering, what are my passions? What, are, what is this unique personal genius that I have? When have you been in a state of flow? And a state of flow, as I say, that is a time when you've lost track of time, when you felt like you're on fire, all of your potential, all of your abilities, everything just seems to be, be used in this specific time. And I know all of you right now can probably go to a place in your minds and think of when was this time when I just felt like I was evolving, I was growing, all of my skills and my abilities, my talents were all being used. What were you doing? Pay attention to this. It's very important because these, I believe, are clues. And some people would call it a calling, the calling to what you're really supposed to be doing in life and what your own unique personal gifts and genius, as I say, your version of genius are, and you can unleash this and unlock it. Now, as you do this, I firmly believe you have to have the intention. And I say that's a strong way to put it, that you have to have it. It's your choice. But I suggest that you have the intention of helping others and bettering society. And there's a very practical reason for this too, okay? So the practical part of this is that we will oftentimes in life let ourselves down. If you have a very hard task to do, Sometimes you give yourself a pass. You say, no, well, not today. I think I'm going to take today off from working on this. I'm going to take 
this personal genius day off. I'm not going to evolve and grow today. But if you have other people depending on you and you, you have a mission to serve others, to help others, to go more and give more for their betterment, you won't let them down. You're now attaching your purpose to other people. And it's something else I want to share as well, too, is that the sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that you get from contributing to others is very, very powerful and gives such powerful meaning in life. And if I can say, it's deeply spiritually moving as well, too. So there are many reasons why we want to attach our own development of our own personal genius and our gifts and all the things we have inside of us to something greater than ourselves. So when you serve others and you serve more than just yourself, you tend to do more, go more, um, and you'll, you'll be committed for the long haul in order to bring out this, this fire you have inside of you. So now, as you try to do this, do you think this is going to be easy? No, it's not. I'm here to tell you, as I alluded to earlier on, that you're going to hit the fog and friction of life. In the Marine Corps, we talked about the fog and friction of battle, okay? You're going to hit the fog and friction of life. You're going to hit fear, adversity, doubt, negative self-talk, which is really bad, by the way, don't do that negative self-talk, all these things that are going to hold you up and hold you back. And this is why I say you need this mindset of ferocious optimism. Ferocious optimism consists of, in my book, where I stand right now, revision maybe later, 10 things, okay? These 10 things, number one, that we choose our attitude. You have to choose your attitude. You have control over very few things in life, I'm here to tell you. You think you're in control, but actually you can control your attitude. I know that for sure. So no matter what's going on in life, you have the ability to steer your emotions, steer them towards thoughts and things and a focus that will lead you to have a good attitude in any situation. Number two, you're going to see the good in any situation, see opportunity, not see the glasses half empty. You want to see the glasses half full, see the silver lining in every cloud, okay? You also want to see the light in the darkness because there will be dark times, very hard times that you're going to go through on your way to becoming the highest and best version of yourself and on your way to helping others as well too. As you do this, you need to see the light and focus on that light in the dark. Next, when we have ferocious optimism, we're never helpless. There's no victim mentality here. This is, you know that you can make a change no matter what your situation is because sometimes that's all you got. If you've got no one else helping you and it's just you, you better start right here and right here and get really clear and just decide right now that you are not helpless. Even if you just start with your attitude, decide there, start there and expand it out. Next, we are never critics and we're never cynics. Criticism, cynicism, to me, this is all weakness. Okay, this is weak. Strength lies in optimism. Strength lies in vision, which is next, we have vision. Strength lies in having vision and communicating to other people of what the better day can be, where the potential lies in each and every situation. It's easy to be someone who's a naysayer and doubter and a critic. It's easy to be that. It's very hard to communicate vision, optimism, and the potential in each and every situation. So we also have the courage to hope. You have to have courage to hope. Again, it's easy. It's easy to say, I don't think it's going to work out. This is never going to happen. It takes a lot of guts as a leader to step up and say, no, I think I see the problem. I see the obstacles. And yet still I push on. Courage to hope. Along with this too, with ferocious optimism, I believe we have to let our last mistake be our greatest teacher. We take these lessons forward after we failed. We bring them forward to create a better tomorrow, which also means that we believe yesterday's failure plants the seeds of tomorrow's victory. All these things wrapped in together. And last, number 10, I think it is anyone keeping count, is we ask the right questions. We don't ask disempowering questions. Why am I so stupid? Why didn't I do this right? Why did I do that wrong? Why are they so stupid? Why are they dumb? But you don't ask that. Instead, you say, how can this serve me now? What is the opportunity in this? How can I learn? How can I make this better? I know maybe this outcome was not what I wanted, but how can I improve it to make it better in the future? Now, I'll tell you what ferocious optimism is not, okay? It is not sticking your head in the sand. It is not hiding. It's not avoiding. It's not some type of positive thinking where we just ignore and wish everything away. It is not that. It's facing your problems, facing your obstacles, finding empowering positive solutions to get through them, and even having necessary conflict when you need it, because there may be times you need to, need to take necessary conflict, okay? And what is the ferocious part of ferocious optimism? I'm going to get to that right now. The ferocious part is this, combat mindset. 
Okay, that puts the ferocious and ferocious optimism. Now the combat mindset is something we talked about in the Marine Corps, where if you're going into battle, if you're going into combat, and you're going into a gunfight, you better be you better expect to be shot at. Okay, if you're in a knife fight, expect to be cut. I know this is pretty harsh stuff. Some people maybe don't want to hear this, but I'm just telling you the way it is. This is where I come from, right? So expect to be shot at, expect to be cut. In life, as you're trying to develop your highest and best self in order to serve others, do you think you're going to have people that resist you and push against you and tell you how you're wrong and doubt on you? And even you make them afraid because you're growing and getting bigger. And what are they doing? They're staying the same. And so they're going to probably doubt on you and say, and, and put you down, criticize you, make you try to get small. But that's when you have to be tough in here and you have to have that combat mindset that you're going to go harder than you've ever gone before, push more than you've ever pushed before, give more than you've ever given before, endure the fear, endure the pain, endure the criticism, and keep on going. Because again, you're focusing on the faintest point of light of the gifts you believe you know you have inside of you so that you can keep on going and bring that out to the world. This is the combat mindset that puts that ferocious, inferocious optimism and I do believe that it is a mindset and something we can control. You have to be prepared to give and to persevere and to have grit and to get through what the hard times are. And part of this is expecting that there will be hard times. And how do you set yourself up for that? How do you, set, how do you prepare yourself mentally for these difficulties that are lying ahead for you? You can do it, though. I'm not going to answer that. That's a little pause and pregnant pause for you, for you to think about that. Okay? But you can do it. So... I'm going to try and make this brief. I really appreciate everybody being here and watching this. But in conclusion, what I want to say is one more time, I'm going to quote Marie Curie, who said that in order for us to have a, make a better world, we first of all have to make better individuals, okay? And in order to make these better individuals, it's their imperative on all of us that we work on ourselves and develop ourselves. And so when I say, make yourself better, make the world better, I'm really saying when you make yourself better, you have the opportunity to make the world better. And it is a choice especially all of you out there, young people out there, you have, the world is yours and you have this choice. You have the future ahead of you. Make the choice to have this mindset. Make the choice to see the light, to believe in yourselves and to contribute to something greater than yourselves that will make our world better. And so whether you have an IQ of 130 or higher or not, some of you out there are actual geniuses. I know that for a fact. And so according to Mensa, but not in my book, darn it. Listen, so whether you have that score of 130 or not, okay, as long as you live daily with this ferocious optimism and you believe that you have some gift, you've been gifted something, and this something must be shared with the world, your own version, your highest and best form of genius inside of you will be waiting for you, ready to be unleashed when you're ready to do so. All right, make yourself better, make the world better. So great to be here. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, and I'm ready for any questions you might have of me.